Okay, um, let's start. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for uh, joining and uh, watching. Uh, it's been a while since we have done this, uh, since pre Kanjam, actually. So um, it's been a very, very busy uh, couple of months over here. Um, lots of exciting things and lots of uh, exciting products and experiences. Um, obviously, Kanjam was um, an amazing uh, success. And uh, I want to start by giving a big thank you to all our partners um, who joined us from all over the world, but also especially to uh, our community who showed up big time um, during that weekend. And, uh, you know, to all of you who have showed up and volunteered um, on Friday evening, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, um, you worked hard. It was very busy, um, but we're also proud to say that, you know, um, this Kanjam London was special. Um, it, you know, it, it was actually one of the better ones. Um, uh, we contributed, thankfully, to bringing some exceptional partners, um, you know, um, Subtonic, Symphonium, obviously, Nijar, um, Maskobo, Masuda san himself was there. It was quite amazing. Um, we were able to represent, you know, Fur Audio, The Audio, our usual um, partners. Questile were there as well, which was really, really cool to see them because they did bring with them um, a prototype of an exciting upcoming product, um, which is portable. And they also announced that they will be releasing um, a CMA 18. So you guys know how much we love the CMA 15. Um, yeah, Zealous, Zealous is here. Hey everyone. <laughs> uh, you guys know how much we love the CMA 15. We're going to be talking today about something that's kind of, you know, in, in the same, um, um, plays in the same category as the CMA 15. Um, but yeah, it was excellent. Uh, it was exhausting. It was how it's supposed to be. And hopefully next year we will be back with, uh, you know, um, with the same energy and with more exciting stuff. So today we have a lot to cover. Um, I'm going to start with um, a product that is dear to my heart and a brand that's actually dear to my heart. Uh, no, maybe not the brand you guys are expecting, but it is X-Duo. Um, I have been a fan of X-Duo for almost four years now. In fact, X-Duo has been as influential in my journey as an audiophile as any other brand out there. Um, because when I was starting, I, in the beginning, I was using my phone, and then I was getting, I got a dongle. And then at some point, I wanted to experience um, what a better amplifier could do with more power and something that could drive headphones, could drive IMs. And after some research, and I didn't want to spend a crazy amount of money. So after some research, I, I found the XD05 Plus, uh, which had, uh, you know, lots of praise, solid product. And so I got that. Um, and then that became my de facto amplifier for a while, actually. Um, and it did a great job. Then I met uh, Mike Bruce online, um, also known as Red Eyes. And so, Mike, if you watch this or you've, you know, you ever come across this video, uh, hi, and thank you for putting me on that journey. And Mike was one of the first people who um, hooked me up on um, op-amps and op-amp uh, swapping. And he was like, you should try this Burson V5i thing. It's the best thing ever. You know, forget the stock op amps. Um, it's, um, you know, this is just takes it to another level. So I went and, and started swapping op amps. Um, and then, of course, we, you know, tried the Burson stuff. And then we, which would actually fit inside the XD05 Plus. And then we moved to trying bigger stuff. So the Burson op amps, um, the big Burson ones, uh, the V6 Vivids and Classics. And, uh, and then the Sparkos op amps. And there was a point where I was using my, and <coughs> you guys, um, you know, who know me for a while have seen these pictures. I ended up using the XD05 Plus with the biggest uh, Sparkos op amp, the SS2590, the Pro one. Um, and that meant that the XD05 was totally out of the case. So, but I didn't stop there. X Duo also, you know, my my first tube desktop amplifier was an X Duo TA20 uh, balanced tube amplifier uh, that allowed, you know, for lots of fun with tube rolling. Very powerful amp, really amazing starting starter amp for someone who wants to, um, 
you know, roll tubes and, and try the hybrid tube sound. Um, so X-Duo is a brand that I love because it makes no-nonsense products. It's optimized for value. Um, all of their products are reliable, um, sol built, built solidly, nothing too fancy, um, but they deliver on performance. And it's one of the brands that actually encourages people to swap components. Um, and that brings us to the first thing I wanted to discuss today, which is this guy, uh, which again, this was one of the stars um, at CanJam London, the XD05 Pro. Now, obviously, this has been um, this has been announced a while ago. Um, it was anticipated by a lot of people, including ourselves, um, and it does not disappoint. That's one thing about this product. That um, this in in similar X Duo fashion, this is the flagship X Duo um, portable, if you want to call this portable. So the first obvious thing is that this is not a portable. Um, unless you have really, really big pockets. But it's transportable. Um, as you can see, this still fits um, in a backpack easily or in a bag. <coughs> um, it is very powerful. This has two watts output. The design language has been, uh, um, you know, ele some elements of the design have been seen in more recent X-Duo amplifiers. Um, but it's a it's a quite industrial, mm. sturdy but pleasant design. This is something that you can have on your desk, yeah. um, you know, and it's nice to look at. It's not it's not fancy, um, it's not made of titanium, but it's solid. When you hold it, you feel like this is this is a solid product. Now, what's good about this, obviously, is that number one, it has all the pretty much inputs and outputs that you want. So it has digital inputs, um, outputs but it also has analog inputs and outputs. What this means is that you can use this, and this is, by the way, similar, um, the XD05 Plus and the XD05 Balanced and the XD05 Balanced 2 um, all have that, which is you can have analog in and analog out. So you can bypass the internal DAC and you can bypass, uh, and you can use this as a DAC. So if you wanted to use this as a DAC, you can, and if you wanted to bypass, hey, VSG. Yeah, that's how we do it. You know, our live sessions are. Um, hey. you, you can see that Zealous is a bit sick, by the way. So please, guys, support him because, you know, he's he's making the effort of being here today. But uh, he's been feeling quite rough this week. So, um, so back to this. Yes, you, you got a ton of inputs and outputs. Um, this can also be used either with the internal battery um, or you can use it with an external power supply. Now, I have used it with a battery pack. Um, some people have reported on HeadFi. I'm not necessarily endorsing this. I'm not saying you should be doing this. I'm not saying that this is safe to do. <laughs> but this is normally takes in a 5-volt uh, DC. But some people reported that they were successful in using a 12-volt um, power input and that it improved the sound. I haven't tried it. Um, I don't know how safe it is. I don't know. It's up to you guys, right? So, but this is again the beauty of X Duo is that they are literally products that are built to tinker with. Mm -hmm. And with the Pro, they went the extra mile. So they know that people have been swapping op amps. So now there is a um, this portion here can be opened, and uh, there is a, a small card that you can take out, and you can literally swap the op amps. It does not invalidate the warranty. So this has been the case again for all X Duo products. And why I love this brand is because they encourage, you know, I'm a tinkerer. Some people like to tinker with, with their products. I'm one of those. And they encourage you to do this. It doesn't invalidate the warranty. With the, with the Pro, you have this part um, that has been thought to, um, to accommodate op amps. And the actual <laughs> space inside is almost as as deep as as, mm. as this thickness. What this means is, while in the past, in order to use Sparkos op amps, for example, which I love and I have loved for many years, in the past I had to pull out the the electronic board and and put the op amps because they were too big to fit in the case. With this one, we can actually fit uh, the Sparkos 3602s. We still cannot fit the big ones. And unfortunately, there is no way that I know of right now 
unless you like find a, a, some way with extenders to have the op amps out of the amp, but it wouldn't look good. Um, but you can fit the Sparkos op amps inside and have this now. So this unit is upgraded with the Sparkos op amps. Why I'm talking about the Sparkos op amps first, even though you guys know there is another feature here that's important, is because from my experience with this product and my experience with um, with the op amps, I honestly believe, and this is why we're offering this on our website, I honestly believe that that op amp uh, swap is the first upgrade that someone should be looking at. Mm. It is such a major, major improvement um, to the to everything. Um, it elevates this device to, to, it's already very good, and again, very competitive for the price. <laughs> um, knowing the power, again, two watts, powerful, this can drive a lot of stuff. I'm not gonna say it's gonna drive everything, but it can drive a lot of stuff. And for IMs, this can definitely act um, as a desktop, which it's supposed to be. It's a transportable desktop amplifier, really. Mm. Um, but the Sparkos op amps, or if you use, by the way, the, the Burson op amps, the V5Is will also do a good job. If you use the, you want to use the, the Muse Zero Two, they will do a good job. Um, there is other op amps you can try. They will probably do a good job. Again, it's not to say that the stock op amps are not good. The stock op amps are good enough, right? Um, but you have a lot of improvement. Um, the other feature here, obviously, is the swappable DAX. Um, this is quite rare. Um, it's been promised in the past by some brands, but it's never been really. So, for example, Shanling, the M30, was supposed to have um, <laughs> swappable uh, DAX as well. Um, I don't think they ever released the second DAC. They released two amplifiers, but not the second DAC. So, um, but this comes now, there is three DACs available. There is the ESS9039 uh, Pro, which is the stock DAC. Then there is the AKM 4499EX. So the, 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 the same DAC that's inside the um, Shining H7. Um, it's the DAC chip that's inside um, a few other flagship offerings. And the SMSL SU9 Ultra. Uh, and the SMSL SU9 Ultra, which is oh, yeah, somewhere, which is a cute little DAC that we got yesterday. We're still testing. Um, quite pleasant, actually. And then the, the, the other DAC chip that's available right now is the ROAM um, DAC chip, which is available, which was um, used in the Kain NA2 first, I think. Okay. And then I, I think, please correct me if I'm wrong, guys. And then uh, it was also used in the IBASO DX320, I think, again. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but the, the, the reason why I'm saying, having tried all three op amps. So again, the swapping the uh, swapping, sorry, the, the DAX. Swapping the DAX is again very easy. You just open this, you know, it's literally you have two sets of screws inside. <laughs> um, you pull out the card and then you replace it. it. It's super easy. The reason why I'm saying I would go for the op amp upgrade first is because the the stock DAC that they included probably for a reason, that they made stock for a reason is already delivering exceptional performance. Um, it's very pleasant. It's a warm, neutral sound. So it's quite technical, um, but it has nice warmth to it. Swapping the DAX, I would say that the ROM DAC was a little bit more neutral, a little bit less bassy. Um, you get detail. Um, I still wouldn't call it bright, but it's definitely more neutral, maybe a little bit more analytical. The AKM DAC, um, again, like for those who tried the Shining H7, the AKM DAC is definitely the bassier than the others, a bit warmer, a uh, bit more fun, maybe. <coughs> but overall, I again think that this upgrade comes first, and then you can play around here with the sound. It's a very cool feature that you can, you know, buy these cards and, and, and play around with the sound. If you want a warmer sounding device, if you want this to become uh, a little bit more bassy, the AKM is good. If you want this to become a little bit more analytical, the ROM DAC is good. I know that some people are saying they don't like it, but again, have these people swapped up amps? Because these provide, you know, these give extra musicality, as we know from the Sparkle sound. The Sparkle sound is, again, neutral, but it's a musical type of neutral. It's, it's a neutral sound that doesn't, um, 
doesn't compromise on musicality. Um, yeah, the Sparkers is one of the more transparent op amps, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. And that's why we love the Sparkers amps as well, either the Gemini or, or the, the big guy, the Aries, is because it's like you're listening to a giant Sparkers op amp. It's, it's nice if you like Sparkers, which again, and again, this brand and Sparkers to me are kind of associated. Uh, and so it makes me happy um, that we can put these two things together as a package because, um, you know, they're both products designed for people who like to open and change and play around with the sound. Um, obviously, again, this supports <laughs> LDAC Bluetooth. This has uh, three power modes. Um, you got, you know, the, the menus are, the menu is, again, very easy to navigate the input menu. You don't have that much uh, complexity to think about, really. It's, it's quite an excellent and clear screen. Yeah. yeah. And I, I really like the the volume dial and the numbers come. It's quite, because it, it goes off as well. It's, 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 yeah. it's all these little touches, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's a fully digital volume dial. Uh, so you get clicks, they're like very subtle clicks when you turn it. Um, it's pleasant. In general, I prefer a volume wheel with a little bit more weight when you turn it, um, but it's pleasant. It looks classy. It looks it looks really nice. This is a quite accomplished product. Um, I start with this because I think XDuo deserve more um, credit and more coverage. Um, but we're also 20 minutes in, and we probably should talk about something else. So the other product, I'm going to let you start with this one because uh, this is yeah another um, is the QLS QA390 LE so it's the lim limited edition um, this is yeah yeah so the uh, the 390 LE there we go so this is an all-in-one that is quite unique it is quite I, I really like the look and the finish sort of gunmetal with gold um, sort of dial lovely dial is it's very i don't know if you can hear this it's very it's very minor clicks uh so yeah gold dial gold buttons um it's a screwless sort of design on the on the side panels uh on the front and on the top the only screws you actually see are on the bottom yeah really it's quite a exceptional uh build construction and design now this is very, very versatile uh, indeed. It is a rival to the Questile CMA15 in terms of performance, power, and functionality. Yeah. Because it it offers um, obviously USB in, that's B, micro in, but you don't obviously have to use that. Uh, it is also a DDC. So I'm gonna sorry, I don't know if you can if you can see the text. So yeah, that's the that's the, the USB Type B. So Toslink in and out, coax in and out. So this is also a DDC, which is pretty cool. Which the Quest style is not a DDC. Yeah. Obviously, it has a single-ended and, and uh, balanced uh, out to use as a preamp, um, or just to use this as a DAC, which you can. And the DAC chip is identical. It, yeah, to the Quest, Quest uh, CMA15, which is the 9038 Pro, but it does sound different. Yes. It does sound different because I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again, DAC chip is a part of the puzzle. Implementation is king. So um, you can also, so there's an option on the front, which is pretty cool. Again, I'm, I'm not sure if you can see that one. So you can bypass the use of its internal battery. Yeah. Which is pretty, yeah, quite unusual. And the outputs is something you, you probably never, ever see this many. So, <laughs> it, or, or, the, or yeah. The, the I have never seen, I have never seen some of these outputs. I've never seen all of them together. Yeah, it yeah. is unbelievable. So you have the full size 4 pin XLR, obviously balanced. Then you have 4.4 uh, Pentacom balanced. You have 2.5 balanced. You have 3.5 balanced. Yeah. That's very rare to see. Very rare. <laughs> yeah, so that was so there. I think there was a pseudo balanced sort of um, I fight XDSD, but so that you know that's pretty cool. Uh, you also get single ended six point three and three point five. 
Yeah. So in terms of connectivity, it is, you know, feature packed, fully fledged. Now, in terms of um, options, there is one that really, really is interesting. Mm. So it's actually listed under the filters where it will upsample everything to DST. Now, it doesn't say specific which DST type is it? 64, 128, 256, 512, I'm not sure, sure, but that is pretty cool. That's a very rare feature. I remember um, when I first saw that feature on a TAIAC DAC, you know, that was was quite expensive back in the day. Um, So yeah, this is, this is pretty amazing. This can power the storm pretty well on low gain, which is insane. If anyone who knows the subtonic storm, you will realize how insane that is. Because um, obviously it's very demanding uh, IEM yeah. to power. And it does, I for me, it does a, a surprisingly good job with the Hyperman Cesara on the max gain setting, yeah. which is pretty cool. Now, this features super capacitors inside, um, obviously for filtration as well as providing quick uh, uh, energy um, sort of reserves on demand. That's that's one of the unique things about super capacitors. A very, very impressive device. And one that sort of, it's a, it's a hidden gem. Yeah. And we are happy, we are glad that we, you know, we have brought it to the UK. Um, I, I think we, I think we might have brought it to the Western world in general. Yeah, exactly. And it's again, it's like X Duo. Okay, X Duo has been recognized because X Duo actually has a following and has had a following for many years, right? <coughs> but maybe it doesn't get talked about as much uh, because there's the you know it's Chinese and it's budget and you know people want to see flagship reviews, but as as uh, when you talk about budget brands you know budget does not mean having to compromise on quality or 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 on sound and and as far as i'm concerned x duo has always been delivering and you know i still own my first xd05 plus and it's, it still works fine so and and it, 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 it spent half of its life again with the board outside of the of the casing now what this doesn't have that the quest style has is uh, line in so mm. with this one you cannot bypass the DAC. you have to use the DAC. um and as uh, zealous was saying the 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 even though it's the same DAC chip is the 9038 they probably couldn't be more different in terms of tonality where the quest style is neutral to bright for my ears yeah um, i would agree whereas this one is neutral warm yeah. and you can and the actual filters that are implemented in, in the QLS, um, kind of similarly to the MUB1, the filters actually make a difference. So there's that DSD filter, which mm-hmm. does make a big difference. The other filters do make a difference. And then there is a bright and mellow. Yeah, sound, um, the tuning mode. Yeah. Uh, it also has, uh, obviously, the, the, the four gain levels, amp voltage, which yeah. is quite interesting. But one thing, I, I almost forgot one input, full size SD. Yeah card so you can just have this unit yeah stick some files here and you're good to go and it is not not that big really you know it's um it's probably the same size it's actually a bit smaller than the mass cobo 433 mm. um it is definitely the smallest that's the screen by the way yeah it's a it's a nice screen nothing too crazy mm. you know it also has a, actually comes with a nice remote so mm. this i have used this as a pre in a speaker setup, and I have used have used this as a DAC into the Cavalli Liquid Gold uh, that I used with, with with my with my full size headphones, and it was <laughs> it, it was a wonderful. This is a very kind of you know that warm analog but still technical sound. Um, as as Zelis was saying, it does drive pretty much anything to be mm. honest. Okay, it's not gonna drive Sosvara as well as a three nine four or you know even. Maybe a four three three might even do a slightly better job, um, but still, for what you for the form factor, this yeah. is a full. This is the only thing you put on your desk, and it's a and it's, it's giving you you know it's more powerful than the XD 5 Pro, um, for sure, and 
you get so many options. Oh, the 2.8 watts. Yeah, it's 2.8 yeah. watts into 32 ohms. Um, so on paper, the difference is not that big, mm. but you know, this is a this is a bit of a step up uh, overall as a as a device. Um, and uh, it's it's exceptional. It's a hidden gem, and this has been out for two years, and there's so, so little coverage of it. Mm. Right, two years. One thing I do want to point out, again, I'm not sure if it's going to show too well, is that these RCA sockets are very high quality. Mm. I'm pretty sure these are gold-plated copper ones. They, are, they do have markings on them, but really, really high quality RCA sockets. So they really, you know, they put there's so much attention to detail on this. Because I've seen, believe me, I've seen very, very expensive devices with abysmal rc sockets yeah and uh, what oh, uh, and what you were mentioning earlier the fact that there's no screws here because all mm. of this part is machined from one piece yeah of whatever the, i think i guess aluminium it is yeah um a seamless it's, design so it's quite nice design okay the the colors personally i would have preferred something like black and gold or <laughs> you know there was a red but it's really elegant still mm. um it's a device you you know um and again, you can bypass, you can use the batteries and you can bypass the batteries um, with, you know, they provide the power supply or they also sell a separate power supply, uh, which we do not have. But this brand, so obviously this brand has been on our radar for more than a year. Um, that's when I first heard about it. Then when we, when the MUB1 came and we tried it and we were so impressed and I'm still, again, I'm, why is there no reviews of the MUB1? Why is why is no one talking about that? That's that should be getting more attention, to be honest, as a portable device. Um, maybe that's you know point of for us to take and to get to feedback uh, mm. in terms of marketing because it does it deserves. But when we got the MUB1, we were like, we need to try what else this brand has. Mm. And then I was like, oh, I remember that someone told me about this. So we got this. We got the <laughs> um, the DDC from the same brand which is again, exceptional value, uh, performs really well. We're very happy with it. People who got it from us are very happy with it. Does the job. Um, if you go on the QLS website, they do have a website in Chinese. Um, you will see how technical their listings are. In fact, they are so technical that I don't understand half of it. But what you can tell is that Clark, so the guy, so actually his name <laughs> is, is written here, Clark. Uh, so Clark, if you watch this, hi. Um, he's very knowledgeable. Um, he's also very available to answer questions. He's surprisingly open with, you know, any question uh, we've been throwing at him from uh, from you guys or just from our curiosity. Um, he is very detailed and he is very thoughtful about designing things. Uh, he has a blog and he writes about how he thinks about it. And again, this is someone who is obsessed with power. For him. A good sound starts with good power, right? Mm. So, um, yeah, this is this is this is really cool. This is cool. Like, as some of you guys know, I've been moving flat recently, and I didn't move my full desktop um, amp until two days ago. And I was like, in the meantime, I have this, and I have the XD05 Pro, and you don't need more than that, right? So, um, it, it's really cool. I use it with speakers with IMs, with headphones. Um, yeah, really cool device. Cool. So now we're moving moving a bit uh, up, I would say, <laughs> moving to another, <laughs> moving to the heavyweights. Yes, Talking about, wow, wow, it's, wow, there's heavier, but yeah, this yeah. is this is a heavyweight. Uh, yes. Again, I'll give you the honors for this one. This is, this is special, this is special. So this, guys, this is the Sonnet Pacifia flagship DAC. This is the sister company of Metrum, but the, uh, and ASLEC, who makes speakers, is also a sister company of Metrum, and they've now merged, and we we work with all all of them <laughs> now, which is pretty cool. So this DAC is a non-oversampling, module-based R2R ladder DAC. This has absolutely zero digital filters. So you, it's as plug and play as it is. But it's not just a DAC because it's a preamp, yeah. uh, which is pretty cool. So quite simple, 
layout design you know there are some vents on the top just to help with you know just for cooling and on the rear i'm just going to show you the inputs and outputs so obviously this is it this is completely differential internal deck design so as far as i'm aware this is four sda3 modules per channel so this is differential as it gets so these two are obviously your rca single ended outputs um obviously that's the xlr you have coaxial uh, rca you have as ebu just here you even have a i squared s rj45 type now finding a ddc to do that is tricky i know of one the the singer sc6 but that is tricky uh anyway it has toslink in it has usb in now i don't think the usb is galvanically isolated but here where right, i'm only going to say good stuff <laughs> <laughs> this is an exceptional DAC. this is the DAC that was hooked up to the 465 at Canjam. yeah actually this was the DAC that was hooked up to all mass coban yeah at Canjam for a reason yeah because it's quite a special DAC. it is resolving it is full sounding there's it has this lovely sort of body and weight to it, especially in the lower regions. So maybe lower mids, upper base, something like that. It is spacious. It's, it, it's, it's an exceptional deck. Now, some people prefer this deck, the Pasithia, to the uh, Pavan. Yeah. Uh, even like with deck three modules or deck two modules, which is interesting. Now, yeah, an outstanding DAC, this one. I will say one thing. These modules are different to the Metron ones. Yeah. Because, the, I mean, they look different, obviously. That's the first. Thing. And they are not interchangeable because the pin, because these slot down, yeah. whereas the Metron ones, they, they sort of go on the board with many, many pins. Right. Whereas these slot in like uh, old RAM. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's quite different, even though they're the same company. But it's it's quite, it's just an exceptional um, DAC and preamplifier. And um, the remote that comes with is, oh my God, it is, the Bill Collie is sublime. It's good, yeah. It is, it is thick and heavy metal yeah. and remote is pretty cool. But yeah. Again, it's a no-nonsense product. So yeah. to, when we talk to uh, um, to Metrum, Sonnet, Acelec, again, they're really now merging into one. You know, they were separate, and um, there was some story. And I think that's you know, <laughs> the, the Metrum was sold and then bought back, and then Sonnet was created in the meantime, and then um, you know, um, the, the the founder decided to bring them all under the same umbrella. So I'd say I'd say Metrum sound. So personally, the Metrum Onyx. Um, which now belongs to one of you guys and is very happy owner, um, has been my desktop DAC for, was my desktop DAC for um, almost two years, one and a half years, two years. And I settled on that one because to me, the sound of the Metrum, um, it's an R2R. So you have that warmth, you have that musicality, you have that, that, that analog, you have that sweetness in the sound, mm. but it's not too much. It's not it's not gooey warm. It's not it's not it doesn't lack technicalities. So it was um, it was it was it was giving me the combination, if you want, of musicality and warmth um, along with with text. And I love that. I found it really, really, really cool. Hey, Smirk. Hey, Manish. Um, oh, hey. <laughs> so the, the, this so the Sonnet lineup um, is more recent than the Metron yes. lineup. Um, but the philosophy behind Sonnet is, and, and this is what, you know, this is their statement, is clearly this is focused on giving you a great sound um, in a simple design. So this is not fancy again. Uh, it's not extravagant. It's not trying to be lux luxurious. Mm. It's not a, a, a hi-fi sized DAC. <coughs> it's simple the design. You might, some people, you know, some reviews have said that they thought, mm, you know, 
could they be doing something with the casing, better quality? But at the same time, this is what they are saying allow them to keep the price um, reasonable. Mm. And when you say reasonable, again, this is not cheap, um, but it, it it delivers. And there is a, we put it with the Mascobo amps. And those of you who tried the 465 or the 394 with the Pasithea, um, you guys were blown away maybe by the headphones you were trying. Well, you know, the, the tungsten was there, Sosvara mm. was there. Um, some people, you know, brought their own headphones um, and they were blown away, the non-7. Mm. But remember... The, the, this was the deck. <laughs> that was the deck. And I had the 465 on my desk for about a month and I was using it with the Metrum Onyx. Um, and then when I, when I tried this, I was like, okay, it's, it's the, the Onyx, as good as the Onyx is, by the way, the Onyx is a really lovely deck. But I was like, all right, the Onyx has been holding the 465 back, which which I never felt before. I never felt that the Onyx was holding back, you know, having compared it to even the TT2. Um, I never felt the Onyx was holding anything back. But with the 465, because of how extravagant of an amp it is, when, when I tried this, I was like, yeah, all right, it, it, this is another level, right? Um, Sonnet also makes the, the sorry the, the the Morpheus, which is um, more uh, cheaper than the um, than the uh, than the uh, Pasithia. Uh, yeah. So if you want, like the Morpheus is kind of you know sits more or less a little bit. It's 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 a bit better, I think, than the Onyx now, mm. um, but it sits around the same price range. This sits in terms of performance about the same. Some people say better. Than the Adagio uh, slash Pavan, mm. um, but uh, in terms of pricing, it's much cheaper. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we we we, we love this. I mean, the, there's no other. Um, it's it has a, it has the sound that we like here, which is warm. When I say again, warm, it's it's not to say it's very warm. It's very technical, <laughs> but music, the right thing to say would be musical, technical musical, mm. right? Which, funnily enough, the speakers from the same brand, which we also have here, um, the Model 1s, do exactly the same. They are super technical, but at the same time, um, they are super musical and really, really impressive. Yeah. Uh, so Smirk says, looking spiffy, my friends. I think that as a compliment. I, I have no idea what it means, but I salute you, sir. We sure are. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means. Whatever spiffy <laughs> means. So... Uh, um, <laughs> But the thing, the good thing about the Pacifia as well is that we now do have another amp here. Oh, thank you. Um, we do have a much bigger. Oh yeah, look, there's something else as well. What's oh. that next to it? Oh wow. Oh, we'll talk about look that at later. That lovely glow. Oh, that's mm. that marble. Oh my god. Oh. Anyway, yeah, we're improving production value here, right? Um, so we obviously have had the the hollow. Um, <laughs> Bliss KTE for a while in the studio. Yeah. As you guys know, we love it. Uh, we did a video where we, we, we talked about it along the Silver Fox. Uh, Silver Fox. We talked about the 394. Mm -hmm. We've covered all of that. But then this arrived um, about 10 days ago, the May KTE. Mm -hmm. um, and once again, you know, before receiving the May, I personally did not really. So we need to go back in focus, I hope. Hey, Bogdan! <laughs> oh, Bogdan's here. There we go. So um, I, I didn't have... I've, I, I've heard the May a couple of times before, but when you hear a DAC on someone else's setup, it's never the same um, as when you hear it um, at home with your own stuff. So um, I didn't really know what to expect. I knew it was R2R, very respected DAC. Uh, funnily enough, you will find online a lot of reviews comparing the May to the Pacifia. Um, or at least there are some reviews mm. from two channel people. Um, it's big. So as you can see, the, the, like the, the hollow stack is big. And yet, I like it. Yeah, and it, it, it looks good. It looks, it looks, there's something about, so when the, when the, when the amp was on, on its, its own, own yeah. I was like, mm, it's a bit wide, it's a bit big. But then when you put it all together, somehow it comes um the the aesthetics of, of it um come to life right they go up another level they do yes. absolutely it looks nice um it's like a, I, I look at it and i'm like it's like a retro futuristic design mm. where it's like there's elements of it the the, the, the screen is you know um that it just works um the may is again an exceptional deck 
It is so yes, good. It absolutely is. It is it is a rival to the Pasithia for sure. Yeah. Um but but again the May KTE and you know when we have it and we've we listened to it for quite a bit, it also goes to show how impressive the engineering is on the Pasithia considering how much smaller this is. Yeah. This is not a two box solution. This is like the power supply is all in one, the deck section is all in one, the output stage is all in one. This is everything, this, this is the whole thing. Whereas the May KTE is two quite big boxes. <laughs> well, it's quite two angry. big boxes. So the, 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 there is, this is the power supply for yeah. the DAC, and this is the DAC itself. Yeah. And it, it's big and heavy. Yeah. Um, so yeah. they are both, they are both um, R2R ladder DACs, but slightly different. Uh, because the Pasithia is module based, yeah. whereas the May is a discrete R2 ladder deck. But it also, it, you can use oversampling. Now, I was, we were, when Manish came around recently, he was playing around with sample rates, and it does some pretty interesting stuff if you can up sample using HQ player. To, 1.5 megahertz or something, but we'll get that. We'll, that, we'll cover that in another day. <laughs> but I, I don't even understand <laughs> what they're talking about. Anyway, they're like, oh, we got it to one and a half megahertz. I'm like, yeah, great. What does that mean? <laughs> Manish is. Uh, you know, oh, no. Yeah. He said something. May doesn't have preamp. That's true. That's a, that's okay. a good point. That's yeah. a good point. Um, yeah. So, but okay. So, you know, when you're getting something like that, <laughs> uh, the uh, when I compare them side by side, uh, with the 394, because I, I like using the 394 for comparison because it's, again, it's a very neutral. The, the 394 is, we were just discussing things. I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know how the 394 manages to be so neutral as an amp and yet so musical and works with everything. There's nothing that we've put on the 394 that hasn't worked, to be honest. Yeah. I'm like, mm, not so sure about this pairing. It just works. Um, but because it's neutral, it's very revealing as an amp. It's not colored. Yeah, that's um, quite, quite transparent. Yes. And so to me, for my own ears, what I was hearing, switching back and forth between the Pasithia and the May, is that two main areas uh, were quite uh, clear to me. The base was a little bit more um, bigger, let's say, on the Pasithia. So it's a, it's a bit of a, I was hearing um, a bit fuller base. Whereas the May mm -hmm. is maybe a little bit more neutral, but maybe more textured base. Again, this is slight. Um, mm -hmm. You you know, AB is not the most reliable thing all the time. But, you know, when you know your ears, and <coughs> that's the first thing. The second thing, however, that jumped to me immediately, and I, and I was like, wait a second, this can't be real. And then the more I, I switch back, is that I noticed that vocals, especially male vocals, were a little bit more forward with the May. Um, other than that, it's, uh, Manish is saying 3942 is neutral lifelike rather than the neutral boring signature. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's the kind of neutral again that we like here. We're not, we, you know, you guys know us, we're not about just measurements or no. we, we love measurements. We love numbers. We love graphs. You know, we have our own IM database. We might have our headphone database. We, we look at all these things, but ultimately what are we hearing? Uh, and how does it compare? And what does it compare to? And this is why, you know, earlier uh, yesterday and today, I was asking you guys on the Discord, what's a good $500 DAC? Because mm. it, yes, there is ranking online, but I want to have, you know, real life experience. Um, so those are the two major differences I was hearing with the, between the May and the Pasithia. Um, is, is there, again, it's all about synergy, right? <laughs> I would say that the May might be, I would consider the May slightly more neutral and the Pasithia, Pasithia slightly warmer. Um, but it's really like splitting hairs. These are two amazing ducks. Um, and, uh, you know, we are looking forward to, we, we are looking forward to uh, testing the uh, Sangrand uh, flagship duck because that's also a duck that's supposed to play at the same level. Mm -hmm. Um, to me, it, the it is more expensive than it's it's the, it's, it's, more, it's a bit more expensive. Yeah, yeah. But again, we're talking about differences in price. Mm -hmm. Where you know, if you're gonna spend 
um, the kind of money that you spend on the Pacifica or the May, mm. you're probably in a position to add the 500 or 600, whatever needed mm. uh, for the for the for the Sangran. But we, we look forward to that. We should be getting a unit soon to to test and assess. Um, but yeah, these are definitely um, you know we we don't have the core Dave here mm. um, yet. We will probably have it at some point, but. At, at this at this point in time, these are the two best ducks sitting yes. in our, and it's not even you know it's not even um, it's not content. It, it's they are clearly the two best ducks, and they are both amazing. Uh, you reach the level where probably you're gonna hit diminishing returns pretty hard after these two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I would agree with with what Sandra and I have said in terms of the comparisons comparisons between the two. So I perceive the uh, Pasithia as a bit more fuller and richer and warmer sounding a bit more i, I do want to emphasize <laughs> it's not like a, a, a you know a syrupy deck and the may i found it slightly slightly more spacious and maybe slightly more detailed but it's so close and so it again when you compare then you realize how impressive the engineering is in with the perceit it's pretty amazing yeah. So really quickly, I want to I want to talk about the the main. So um, obviously the Pacithia has a preamp, but the main has a galvanically isolate, isolated USB socket. Um, obviously the Pacithia comes with the remote as well. Uh, the screen they, they they both come with a pretty nice screen. With the main you can turn the screen off, which is pretty cool. Right. Um, I don't know if you want to do that, but in terms of digital inputs it does offer a little bit more than the Pacithia, if that is important but in all honesty the most important after sound quality obviously is size like <laughs> you, you listen yeah. you, you know if you you're, if you haven't got much real estate on your desk it's a big boy so just bear that in mind <laughs> yeah and, and the, the the maze obviously you know i can see the the hollow stack I can see that as um, even though there's no preamp function, but let's be honest, most, you know, I'm thinking about someone who has a kind of a two channel setup mm. and wants a really good DAC for that. Mm. And then also wants headphones. So this could be a solution where you still need a pre for your um, speakers, mm. but this could be like a solution that looks, it does take space. Mm. So definitely, um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a great solution if you want to have a DAC for your say speakers and then headphone, or if you just have a you know space on your on your desk. Um, I mean, obviously, two channel people can always add the serene. Yeah, to the main. that's true. That's no, true. and obviously that comes with the remote as well. Yeah, so. but really uh, yeah, it, it's <coughs> I I like I like the design of it and the sound of it works. Obviously, two widely wild widely different design philosophies, mm. um, choices and. Uh, Ultimately, the sound is is a little bit different, but not that different, which is good because it mm. means we're again, you know, um, these are probably two of the champions in 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 kind of the uh, flagship DACs before going. The the next step up is probably much more expensive, mm. you know. But yeah, these are two two of the, two of the best under six k. Yeah, then you know to to go to go higher from here, we're probably talking about the Mola Mola or mm. talking about the Dave, Dave. Yeah. Um, and that's that's you know a few thousands more um so we we love we love them both um you know other otherwise we would probably not be talking about them mm. but uh but really really impressed and um they again they pair well with different things um the may and and bliss stack is nice it works nicely as well mm -hmm. um they pair well together i think yeah i like it one thing which some of you guys might know but i do want to mention it because it's quite important the may is quite a hot source yeah so you have to be careful with amp pairings because its output voltage is a lot higher than the industry standard and some amps don't like that so you might run into clipping yeah or just you, you might hear distortion and blah 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 so just something to be wary of obviously the pasithia this is one advantage to the pasithia. Mm. it just has standard voltage out I mean. and there's no option on the may to reduce yeah. okay yeah. it's just hot Right. So, yeah. 
<laughs> hey, some, some, you know, some, hey, Manish, Manish is saying 5.8 5. volts helps me cook my eggs. Um, well, the, the, the maze does get a little bit hot. And uh, I think it was um, uh, Yifang today on the Discord was saying that, you know, he lives in Australia and, and uh, he was like, the, the holostat is getting really hot. So he was looking for a rack solution because it does get hot. All of they, they do get hot. Uh, we already mentioned when we talked about the bliss that it gets hot. Um, the bliss gets hotter than the maiden. Yeah, I mean, as it, uh, you, you would hope. You, you yeah, expect. Yeah, yeah. You'd expect. Um, so yeah, that's. I think that's pretty much okay. The, there's other stuff we we can cover quickly. Um, for so obviously, um, those of you who know, we are now also um, carrying this, which is um, this is one of our. And when I say our, I mean myself, Zelos, and then there's Bogdan, and there's probably two other guys um, who are connected right now who know what this amp is. Um, we have owned it in one shape or another. This is the uh, Felix Euphoria Evo. Um, this is very <laughs> simply one of the best um, OTL uh, tube amplifiers out there. Um, this amp, not with everything, so again, you know, this is not something that you're going to use with um, hungry planar headphones. Yeah. But for dynamic drivers in general, yeah, Bogdan is uh, knows what we're talking about. Yeah. For dynamic driver headphones and IMs. Yes, and, and IMs. IMs. And IMs. Why that is, I don't know. This is <laughs> just pure magic. Um, what this does to Sennheiser headphones. ZMF headphones, Focal headphones, um, IMs like Singularity, um, you know, um, the Svana, the, 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 the Turi TI, it's just, it's, it is exceptional. You get the staging, um, you get the warmth. Um, obviously, with tubes, you sacrifice a little bit in terms of dynamics. Mm -hmm. um, but one combo that I personally love, and I, I find it stellar, is uh, this can be a preamp. And so one of my favorite combos is this as a preamp into the Moscow 3942. And then you get almost like a hybrid sound where you have the, uh, the X, you, the thing with it, with the 394 is you have the XLR and, and RCA switch mm, on the okay, front, on the front. And so, okay, it's RCA and XLR. So it's not fair to compare them, but, um, if anything, the RC, the XLR is supposed to be performing better. Right. But mm. if anything, but um, when when we have the same DAC, and then you put the XLR um, output direct from the DAC, and then the RCA goes through here. So in the back, you can see there's um, an in and an out. And you can mid song, you can flip the switch, mm. and you literally hear the stage expand and shrink and expand and shrink. Right? This is um, yeah. This, this is a great, great, great amp. It is really um, this is a very special product. Obviously, the Envy is also a special mm. product, but this is um, the, the Envy is different, though. The Envy is a hybrid. <laughs> this is this is not. Oh, yeah, no. I'm going to be very brief for the Euphoria Eva. Um, it is the best OTL tube amp probably in the world, and it's a very very good preamp. Very very good. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, it's not much more to say. Yeah. Um, it's an experience and. Uh, I still have a unit of that. I bought one, never wanted to sell it. Um, you know, some of us bought and sold and regretted selling. Um, some of us, you know, some people sold it to upgrade as well. Mm -hmm. uh, although it's not clear what the upgrade is from in OTL, it's not obvious. If you're going to hybrid route, yes. Mm, but, but OTL? It, as an OTL, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think I think I actually kept my unit, my personal unit. Uh, yeah, Bogdan is saying I'm one of those who regret. But yeah, yeah 300 B though, yeah. So um, only upgrade, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I, I mostly kept my unit because obviously, yes, for the dynamic driver use, but I actually use planners mostly, mm -hmm. if you know, right? I mean, yeah. the, only, the only dynamic headphone I really use right now, um, personally at home is is a special focal that we would not talk about here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's not an unreleased product. It's, it's just a, an experiment, but um, but I, I mostly kept my unit because of how well it does as a pre as well, because mm. I love that. I love that adding, you know, 
um, I have, you know, the Cavalli liquid gold is a great solid state amp, and then you add the euphoria as a pre, and, and that gives you like a, a really, really a hint of magic. Transitioning, talking of magic, <laughs> maybe we should uh, say something <laughs> about this marble thing over there. Hmm. So that obviously, um, I, no, no, not obviously. For those who don't know, I'll come over actually. Yeah. So for for hello there. Yeah. So for those it's... who don't know, this is the great Sennheiser Orpheus HE1 flagship electrostatic headphone system. That's its full name. It is not just a headphone. Some people think it's a headphone. It's not. It's the whole thing, which is an amp, which is a DAC, and a preamp as well. And it comes with a remote, which is pretty cool. Um, where where do, where do we start? Where do we even begin with this? Okay, if I the if I sum it up quickly, this still is. I've heard this many, many, many times. Um, you know, people's homes. I've heard it on its own with the with the Cord Dave and M Scaler, and obviously here we, we you know we heard it with the Pasithia and the May that KTE. Um, this is still, in my opinion, the best headphone system in the world. It is also the most expensive. <laughs> um, it's sixty thousand. Uh, there is a wait time, normally two to six months, but it is exceptional. It is utterly exceptional and pretty comfy. Yeah, it is. It's a big. It's a. It's a quite sizable. Yeah. Um, you expect it to be heavy when you look at it, um, but then when you put it on, it's it's is well designed. It's comfortable. The the headband is comfortable. And uh, it just feels amazing. And everyone who's tried it, I'll you know. put it on for you guys. Yeah. Oh, thank you for the for showing. <laughs> this is the HE1 time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks great. I mean, it's it's a, it's, it's a stunning looking thing. Yeah. Um, I would say so when when I when I knew that we were gonna get the HE1 and uh, you know electrostatic system. Um, I didn't hear it at Kanjam actually, even though you know we we were Sennheiser's partner at at Kanjam, and we you know um, Zealous spent the afternoon setting it up with them and making sure everyone works, and Bogdan actually, um, and uh, I didn't get to hear it at Kanjam because we were just too busy. Mm -hmm. So when when I knew that you know um, that you know, and we want to thank Sennheiser by the way for sending this and and uh, uh, giving the opportunity to us, but also to the people who can. Um, uh, the, the people who can visit and and try this, um, you know, um, we really want to thank Sennheiser for offering offering this exceptional opportunity. But in my kind of you know, um, I'm not an expert uh, in terms of uh, electrostatic headphones. This man is. But the so <laughs> the electrostatic headphones that I've heard so far, um, you know, is have have come through Zealous, and, and some of them have been really good. I've loved some of them. But in general, I'm someone who likes bass. And I like bass, I like quantity, and I like punch in the bass. And before receiving the HE1, I was like, I'm going to consciously manage my expectations. I'm not going to expect it, even though it's the best, you know, um, advertised as the best headphone system in the world, et cetera, et cetera. In inside, I was like, I'm going to manage my expectations. I'm not going to expect it. Um, to deliver a bass performance that would satisfy me. And I was wrong. And I was very, very wrong. When I, that was the first shock that I had. This thing hits hard. Um, okay, it is not the hardest hitting bass. Um, it's still kind of tuned reference, I would say, um, overall, with a good bass. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so... Sorry, that was, that was, yeah. a, that was a, a Discord message. Discord. <laughs> and uh, so I, I was, I, I, it was just a punch in the face how much, how good the bass was. It's textured, it's punchy, it's full. 
um, it doesn't, there's zero bleed, um, it's fast, it's just so satisfying. And when you combine that satisfying base with the exceptional staging, and I have to say for me, the HE1, where it is just mind blowing is the staging, is how immersive the experience is. And when I tried it the first time, at some point, um, you know, for me, hearing the H1 the first time, I was like, oh, I'm going to focus on trying to understand mm. what's going on and is there anything? And then after like five minutes, I just completely got lost in the music and I completely let go of this, you know, um, analysis, paralysis, whatever that we, you know, we're always, on, oh, I would love a bit more of this. I would love, no, you know what, with this thing, I, I wouldn't change a thing. Um, it's it's not just a luxurious product it's also a very 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 serious audio product mm. um <laughs> and it's an emotional experience it's fast it's resolving its image is amazing uh, the treble is excellent even though the graph shows some brightness it's not smooth it's not like tame it's not dark and it's not bright it hits it it kind of hits those um difficult to achieve perfect spots where if you go above you're going to be bright and if you go under, you're going to be probably a little bit warm or dark. It, it doesn't cross those lines somehow. I would say that it's still somehow warm in the low end, somewhat, like a touch. But that's the kind of sound that is really engaging and pleasant while still being very technical. And that's really hard to hit that. In my experience with headphones and IMs, it's really hard. Um, I think it's actually harder with speakers to hit that balance, mm -hmm. right? Things like Storm managed to hit that balance really, really well. Um, but in general, it's quite difficult to hit that balance, right? So what a product. Um, those of you who haven't um, been yet, please come and try it because it's uh, it's only here for a limited time, very limited. And, yes, um, get your request in quick. Please. Yeah, um, and it's, it's, it's worth trying. Some people have said, okay, but if I try this, I'm going to hate um, you know, I'm going to hate what I'm going to hear next. That is not true. You know, it, you can, you know, you, you can appreciate every experience for what it is. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, I want to close this by talking about um, something that we received just yesterday and that I'm really enjoying. This is not a full, this is not a review. These are just like literally quick impressions. Um, this is a $212 IM, which is called the Simgot EA1000. Now, I love the Simgot EA500, um, and I think at, <laughs> at its price point, it's just the build quality, the sound, the fact that you get tuning nozzles, um, the bass it delivers um, for $79 is, is just mind-blowing. And uh, this is the second Simgot model that I hear, the EA1000. And this is not perfect by any means. Um, I still, for my own taste, the treble might be a little bit spicier than I um would ideally like but pff, the bass is phenomenal um it punches it's it stages nicely it images very well um this is a great product um at 200 dollars. i'm really really enjoying this so this is uh just a quick you know transition to say also that it's not all about and you know it's, it's, it's not that if you have a more expensive system you're going to mm -hmm. have more enjoyment of the music we don't believe in that. We don't endorse that. Uh, more expensive is not always better. But yes, I mean, some products are exceptional. In my opinion, budget products that achieve sound like this, um, you know, and we are ourselves working on a budget product collaboration mm -hmm. right now that we will hopefully, you know, uh, talk about more when it's ready. Uh, very excited. Very excited about that. Um, you know, we did our first collaboration was the Helios SE, which we couldn't be prouder of. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and uh, with with, uh, with Symphonium, um, it's I still think it's you no know, for 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 that sound um, performance and that sound signature, um, it delivers for the price. And now we are working on something that you know we worked on Loki, which is a bit kind of you know it's a soft collaboration. Mm -hmm. Let's say it doesn't have our name on it, but there is definitely some of our um, input in there. The Loki Emerald Edition, and we we are working now on a, on a much more budget product and. I'm very excited because I want our our mission is to find the best sound at all prices. Yeah. What doesn't matter what the price is, you know. We want to find the best sound because we get excited about sound 
um, it's not about the driver type or the driver count or the, the cable material or the, the shell material. Okay, the shell material can can yeah. be important yeah. <laughs> uh, for the sound and for the quality, of course. Yeah. But um, yeah, we're 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 excited to to deliver something that's a bit more affordable as well. Hopefully, hopefully soon. Fingers crossed. Um, I think that's that's enough. It's been more than an hour. Yeah. It's already a long one. Sorry um, about the long one, guys. But we had to, it was as long longer than you want. Yeah, we we sorry for the silence. Uh, we we want to do this more often, but it's very busy and we're you know um we're obviously trying to keep up with everything um including the business side of things so uh, thank you everyone for your patience and for being here thank you again for your support and uh yeah we'll we'll see you again soon take care guys all right bye, bye everyone <laughs> <coughs>